stopped our recording. So this uh, is important and uh, the topics of encapsulation. Uh, there are some 24 slides or so to go through, some more important, some less important, but you know, we'll just uh, stick with, with the agenda, I guess. Uh, so encapsulation, things to talk about. We're going to start talking, uh, now we're starting to talk about C++ classes. So we have to define what it is. We also going to discuss in detail what data member is and what member function is. Then we're going to say, uh, you know, possibly we're going to get into the, the difference between the header file and implementation file. Um, there could be different workarounds or in this area. For instance, you could store most of it in your header file, but I would prefer that we use both of these. Going to have to talk about that. Uh, then we're going to uh, discuss the fact that uh, classes, when we define classes of objects, uh, they're going to um, introduce their own scopes, which clearly affects the life cycle of anything inside and also the visibility of the variables and functions we're going to use in those scopes. Mm, then we're going to discuss um, access control. Uh, to say that we can put restrictions on what's inside our classes and discuss why is it a good idea. And then we also are going to discuss ways to break access control rules by, by introducing friends which become exceptions of the uh, overall rules. The idea of a class is that um, uh, if you think about um, a concept, and oftentimes it's just a physical concept, it could be um, a classroom, or it could be a student, or it could be a customer, or it could be a bank account, and things of that nature. Um, and uh, if you think about those concepts, they can be pretty useful in defining what our software does. For example, if I wanted to model uh, mm, or simulate environment inside a building, I could create a building with a collection of classrooms. Each individual classroom could um, be um, uh, represented by, you know, everything that, uh, all of its functionality, uh, the, um, you know, the, ad, the, the, the data that describes it, for example, number of uh, chairs available, uh, availability of these chairs, um, then also, um, you know, equipment that is present there. And uh, so we could say that the concept of a classroom could be useful if we want to build a bigger concept uh, like a building. Okay, possibly. Uh, obvious um, things uh, uh, come with more um, of a, uh, um, you know, business-like, uh, from business-like environments. And that includes, for example, the concept of student. The student has a name, the student has um, uh, all kind of ad other attributes such as you know phone number, <coughs> student ID, uh, the the whole uh, collection or access to their grades. Uh, so uh, there, e there clearly there are very specific data that 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 uh, that that is directly useful in defining what the student is or what the customer is or what bank account is. So that's that's very natural to concept you know, keep track of our concepts um, in that manner. Um, the question is, could we get some help from the compiler and the, the overall programming environment in terms of making, uh, uh, making uh, those concepts directly applicable in terms of how we model, uh, how, how we build, build our abstract models of the real world using programming language? And the, the answer is yes, object-oriented programming languages support this uh, uh, idea directly through the introduction of classes. So to, to run a small demonstration here uh, would be if we just say, okay, integer main, that's our main function, right? So we're going to resize it, make it more readable. 
people. All right. And so that's perhaps the smallest version of main that we can get. But uh, let's think about a uh, concept of a student. Uh, so student, if we want to express it as a concept, uh, the definition of this concept is going to look like this. Class, student, to spell it correct, right? Uh, it has its own scope, which means we use uh, braces to define the scope of this class. And if we use this sort of like uh, declaration of a class, which is which technically this thing is here, we also need a semicolon in order to mm, keep uh, a compiler happy about our declaration. That's the basic uh, parts of syntax. Um, I also prefer, especially if I am expecting my file to contain multiple classes, to actually uh, copy and paste this little part here at the end as a comment. So I see where is the tail of my class. Because many things can go in between, and so sometimes uh, th this is just my habit. As soon as I type in a new class, it just uh, uh, becomes uh, uh, convenient for me to keep the tail of my class. Obviously, it's optional. But most importantly, don't forget the semicolon at the end of this uh, class definition. And this is, um, um, I'll say, class uh, definition. Uh, it's actually a declaration definition, but it's it's going to define a class uh, in its entirety. So uh, we said maybe an integer ID uh, could could be helpful. Uh, we could say that um, uh, you know string uh, name could be helpful uh, here. Uh, we can say that uh, maybe. Um, um, uh, some sort of an integer, or actually maybe double, uh, uh, GPA uh, would also be helpful uh, to keep track of in terms of data. Uh, so far, those are some data attributes with specific data types which, uh, which help to describe what could be useful information about a particular student, right? Uh, once we have this definition, uh, we can create students, and we can create as many as, you, as we want. Um, besides just data, which strikes me as a data structure, right? If you can have an integer somewhere in memory, you could easily have integer followed by a string followed by a, a double number. And you know you could clone these uh, data definitions all over the place. So that's that's you know not uh, not a significant uh, mm, uh, you know advancement so far. If you want to go conceptually higher to you know higher levels uh, conceptually, but here's something we could add here: public. And I'll talk about this in a second. And uh, you know something trivial like. Uh, set, uh, or we can say compute, compute uh, GPA. This could be a very useful function. Uh, you know, it could uh, uh, take uh, some parameters. Uh, right now, for the, for the sake of demonstration, I'm not even going to uh, even, even think about what kind of input parameters would be required. You know, you need to uh, get, you know, review the whole collection of grades on file and compute uh, grade point average uh, from there. But uh, this is clearly not the data, but this is a, an, an, uh, uh, this is a, a, mm, uh, a task uh, which typically is represented by a function uh, in C++. So to define this function, I will just say, how about this? I can say reset GPA instead of compute GPA, just say reset and say that it doesn't return anything back. And what it does, it basically says GPA equals 0.0, .0 which is a double number. How about something uh, similar like this, uh, sim simple like this? So we have this reset GPA uh, option in this class. 
And this looks like a function, right? You should recognize a function simply by looking at uh, the name of the function, uh, an empty set of parentheses, uh, empty set of parentheses right here, a void as a return type, which doesn't return anything, and a set of braces which define the function body. Okay. And we give it to a student to notice that uh, the, the, the placement of reset GPA function is inside student class. So we had some data fields specific to each student. And now we have this function that we said it would be uh, convenient to have this function work on students only. You know, it shouldn't apply on classrooms. You know, it doesn't have to do anything with classrooms or buildings or, or other parts of campus, but it's very specific to a student. Now, how can I use this now? I could say student. Um, uh, what would be a good, good, uh, uh, good uh, variable name? I guess uh, st. Uh, um, and uh, uh, once this um, definition of a class is in place, right here. Once the definition of a class is in place, what it really becomes, which is now truly a kind of conceptual step. Uh, you know, above just uh, simple structural programming, just writing functions and working with variables uh, that you can create inside your function or also in your global scope. So now this becomes conceptually different is that this uh, class student uh, definition defines a new data type. This new data type brings two things with it conceptually. The data fields, which are these guys right here, ID, name, and GPA. But then also, it brings in the behaviors. The, any function that we say, you know what, it would be useful to, to have this class, uh, you know, uh, to, to make it possible for this class to use this particular function. Uh, this uh, is, um, so if we say, these are data attributes, right, useful for the class. So then this becomes uh, a set of behaviors uh, that, that are also, bless you, that are also useful uh, for this class. And then, um, uh, because I just said that this declaration, starting with class, student, opening brace, specifying data attributes and behaviors, closing the brace, uh, making sure you have a semicolon, and I even add this nice looking, you know, trailing comment there. But then, this becomes a data type. So I can tell student and uh, create student, and then I can say student st, uh, you, you know, I can say a reset GPA. And uh, this is what we call a member function, uh, a member function call. Behaviors are defined by uh, member functions. Since the function is defined inside the class, we say this is a member of, a, of our class, member function of our class. In addition, the data attributes are you know in C++ defined as uh, the uh, the uh, uh, member variables. Those things are called methods in Java. If you you know try to do anything with with Java, uh, then uh, member variables are mostly called. Uh, um, uh, uh, instance attributes or data attributes in Java. So clearly, class can have its data, but class can also have its behaviors. And so this is a quick demonstration uh, on how this uh, can be uh, done. So um, the next thing is that if I wanted to have um, uh, an array of 100 students, I could do that as well with very very little effort. I could just say student. Um, I could say mm, 
uh, you know, division. And for a particular division, I could have maybe uh, 400 students in that division. Right. And, and that's just uh, as simple as that. I can, I can declare an array, and we're going to talk about arrays, but this is how simple it is. I can create one student or 400 of them. And if I begin to operate on individual elements or individual instances of, these, of this division of students, uh, each one of them will have its own GPA, each one of them uh, will have its own name, and each one of them will have uh, its own uh, ID. Uh, yes, uh, just come. Correct. Um, you didn't put a constructor? So uh, yes, the constructor is going to be the topic of our discussion next. Okay. I, of course, yes, that's where you start. We're going to spend a lot of time discussing class constructors and that, you know, all the needs that, that come with constructors and uh, every, th every problem that constructor solves for us. So here's um, a um, uh, 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 poor person replacement for constructor. Um, you know, there is the syntax that I can initialize my ID with 1001. My uh, name is, uh, you know, as Joe, and my GPA as, uh, I don't know, 3.5 right here. There is this uh, initializer syntax, which is available on, uh, mm, uh, um, you know, on, uh, actually, this is not going to work unless I also make this public. Uh, but uh, for now, uh, I guess I can do that. Uh, I also never brought in the string, so I need to s explain to the compiler what uh, a string is, so I need to include string. Uh, and if I'd like to use the simplified notation, uh, not using namespaces, I would have to say using namespace or using this particular, you know, I can probably just use this, right? Uh, using uh, declaration, using std string. So to, to simplify uh, notation. And uh, we should be able to compile at this point. We do not display anything. We do not really do anything meaningful. But conceptually, we should see if it compiles. All right. So it does compile. Um, 